right, so I'm going to go ahead and redraw a Minkowski diagram here. And we're just going to draw one, uh, one axis of space. And so we're just going to focus on the X, or we'll end up uh, relabeling things as X primes later, but just the X and the T axes for now. Now, imagine that something just, we, we take any other arbitrary, um, any arbitrary object and just launch it with a random velocity V and just along the x-axis according to an observer in the S or the, the black reference frame too. So I'll be, I'll be color coordinated here and we're going to launch some object at some velocity. We'll call it beta, in fact. And it's going to have its own world line that looks like that. So think of this in your mind, at least right now, as the world line for an object going at a constant velocity. But if you imagine that object, so we'll do kind of a little, you know, close up of it here. Um, as time goes by, so this is that object, we'll call it S prime here. It has an X, it has a Y, it has a Z, those are all primed. So it has its own coordinate system. And if you were some little hobbit who was standing right there and you had some hobbit-sized clock next to you, you would see that hobbit-sized clock remaining at rest at all times. And specifically, if that's where the origin was indicated, this world line here would trace out the exact path of the origin at all times delta t prime. So this becomes the location of the origin or the other way of saying that, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little bit obsequious in the jargon here. This is the location where x prime equals zero, and I'm gonna use set theory notation for all time t prime. All that means is for no, no matter what time t prime, it's the location where x prime equals zero. So it's where the origin lies, so it's the world line of the origin. And specifically the origin of s prime. I wish I had like taken a drawing class before I started teaching. <laughs> I like, can't even draw a damn straight line. Um, anyway, so this is really important now because if it's the location where x prime equals zero, let's imagine this right here. Let's look in the reference frame S in black. For the reference frame S, if you take the location X equals zero for all time, that's exactly what this line right, right here is. So it's the location of X equals zero for all time T. And what do we know that as? That's, I mean, that's just the t-axis, or the y-axis in this case here. The t-axis, because that's the variable we're measuring along that axis. If you have a y and an x, the location where x equals zero at all times is, by definition, the y-axis. And so, I mean, it's a different interpretation than you might sometimes think, but that's literally, by definition, what what an axis is, what a vertical axis is. It's a location where the x variable is x at all times. So we, that's really kind of cool now because we have some new, like not vertical thing, but it still behaves like an axis or an axis prime. It's the location where at all times x prime is zero. So by exactly the same reasoning, we need to call this the t prime axis. So that's literally what we call it. So this is a really kind of interesting point now because we have an axis T and we now have an axis T prime and they are, this one is shifted over by some small amount. And we could call that some angle. I don't want to use, well, I mean, you can maybe use theta, but uh, we'll just call it some amount alpha. Basically there's some shift here and then we have a T prime axis, which is slightly rotated. So now the next question becomes, what about the X 
axis in the S prime frame here. So I'm going to erase some of that here. So this is, I'm going to take a, a very different route to derive this here. We had, in this case, we basically just used the reasoning about world lines here to indicate where you would have the same location where the origin would be at all times t prime equals zero. I'm going to use an analytic approach here based on the Lorentz transformations as we know them. So I'm going to specifically say, um, well, by the way, if we think about it, before, before I get into the Lorentz, Lorentz transformations, how do we define the x prime axis? So we define the t prime axis to be the, the, the locus of all points on this graph where the x prime position would be zero. So we now need to use the same reasoning. So go back in the video or whatever, because that's, that's how we'd set it. Location where all x primes were zero. So just by similarity, we now want to say the x prime axis is simply just the set of all points where t prime equals zero. And by the way, I use the word event because that should be the word that we're using here to describe space-time coordinates. So all we're going to do here is we're going to take the Lorentz transformations now, and we're just going to set x prime, or sorry, we're going to set t prime equal to zero and see where the set of x primes and t primes come out. So let's take the set of x equals backup lighting. This is hilarious. My, uh, my backup lighting just broke. <laughs> this is the base of my light. <laughs> uh, I'm going to unplug this so I don't burn the house down. Okay, so anyway, my lamp is entirely broken. Uh, let's take the Lorentz, the Lorentz transformations uh, for if you know the prime variables, which we do here, at least we know t prime, and you want to find the unprimed. So these are going to be what, call, what we call the inverse Lorentz transformations. And in this case, instead of having minus v, if you view it from s prime's frame, it looks like s is moving backwards at v. So the only difference, instead of s seeing v, seeing s prime moving forwards, S prime sees S moving backwards. We substitute a negative V instead of the positive V. So in this case, the Lorentz transformations go as this. X equals gamma times X prime plus VT prime. And T equals gamma times uh, T prime plus V the x prime over c squared. And now if we look at this here, if we plug in t prime equal to zero at all points, that drops out, that drops out, and we now have a set of points that look like x equals gamma vt prime, and, you know, I'm going to shift over to do a little more math here. Um, Yeah, so I'm just going to solve it here, and then we'll rewrite it later. X equals gamma V T prime. I'm stupid. This term is zero. The T primes are zero there. So very clearly, X equals gamma X prime. T equals gamma vx prime over c squared. Now, what I want to find here is some equation. So I, I want to look for some, some linear equation that describes some sort of a line. And I'm going to drop, it might be directly along the x-axis. It might be a little bit above the x-axis. It might be a little bit below. One of these I'm likely to find, jeez. I'm likely to find one of these three to be my x prime. I don't know which yet. But it will either be offset a little bit positively or a little bit negatively. 
So what I want to do is I want to find some equation that basically says y equals mx. Because all three of these clearly run through the origin, and that, that makes sense because we've already defined, when we have these inertial reference frames, the way that we have set the Lorentz transformations up. When you plug in t or t prime equal to zero, the x and the x prime and everything will be zero. They all line up at exactly zero at zero. So, in that case, we want to find some linear equation that's literally just directly proportional to one another. And this is a normal y equals mx plus b with b of zero. But more specifically, in this case, the axis we're graphing on the x is x. The graph, or the axis we're graphing on the y is t. So I want to get in, in, in the form of t equals some value times x. And the way to do that, we have t parameterized in terms of x prime. And then we have x prime parameterized in terms of x. So I'm going to erase a fair amount of this, and we're going to combine those last two statements here to find some equation that says t equals that guy with that guy plugged in. And you know what? I'm not even going to bother doing that because it's freaking simple. I'm just going to replace. So we have x prime equals 1 over gamma times x. That 1 over gamma cancels that gamma. And now x prime just becomes x. So we have vx over c squared. I'm going to posit that this is alpha. I'm saying is it alpha. That the same alpha that we drew up here. So let's pause for a moment here and let's uh, get rid of some, some work. But we just found our parameterized equation for the time t in terms of our x variable x.